Hey everyone, and welcome to Toy Station. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the much-anticipated Disney Gravity Falls Journal 3. I'm going to be skimming through the book, just looking at random pages, and reading some of the sections to you. So if you want to hang out and listen to some of the content, stick around. Let's start by removing the book jacket. All right, it looks like a blueprint, and it is showing here. Let's see the sea monster and right here in the center you see the portal moving along the raccoon den the Gideon bot and it says it's from the desk of Fiddleford H. McGucket and here we have a torn note from the creator of Gravity Falls Alex Hirsch and I'll read it to you it says hey guys I'm Alex Hirsch the creator of Gravity Falls and the voices of Grunkle Stan, Suze, Bill Cipher, Old Man McGucket, and possibly your nightmares. If you're a fan of the show or just someone who likes to be confused, delighted, and horrified in that order, then you're in luck. In your hands, you hold the author's coveted journal, a full-color, 288-page treasure trove of never-before-revealed secrets, monsters, and mysteries in the sleepy town of Gravity Falls. You'll learn, you'll learn Ford's tragic backstory, Blendon's whereabouts, what Dimension 52 is, and how to lure a platypus. This is a book many dark forces want to get their hands on, so beware anyone who tries to take it from you, especially if they have glowing yellow eyes. Most important, have fun. After all, there's no such place as Gravity Falls. Or is there? Your pal, Alex Hirsch. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now on the other side of the book jacket, it talks about some of the people involved with Gravity Falls, such as Alex Hirsch, which is the creator, uh, Rob Renzetti, who is a writer, and Andy Gonzalez, who is a designer and illustrator re responsible for the journal pages seen on Gravity Falls and many more in this book, and Stephanie Ramirez, who is the illustrator of uh, many pages in this book, and she is part of Disney Television. Now, if we look at the back side, we have some fan reviews here, and one is from Guillermo del Toro. Another one is from R.L. Stein, author of Goosebumps and Fear Street, and even a cool one here from Grunkle Stan that says, this book is amazing. Buy it twice. Awesome. All right, so that was the book jacket. Now let's get to what we've all really been waiting for, the journal. Look at that. The number three. Ooh feels so nice too. It is like really nice quality. It feels really slick where the hand is and a little more rugged on the other parts. If we look on the back here, it has like the torn area. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. It actually feels different. The torn area feels kind of like rough torn paper. Very cool. I like that. All these attention to details. Very nice. All right. Let's open it up, and here we have like these very stained pages looking very rusticy, and it says property of, and of course it's torn. It says volume three, ad extra per espera. Not sure what that means. Next page says June 18th. It's hard to believe it's been six years since I began researching the strange and wondrous secrets of Gravity Falls, Oregon. In all my travels, Never have I observed so many curious things. Gravity Falls is indeed a geographical oddity. Now we turn the page and it says, Floating eyeballs. Are they watching me? The other page says, Giant vampire bats. Back to the page with the floating eyeballs. It says, Yes, what else would floating eyeballs be doing? And other random things like, Visible only at night. Hard to catch. They either have the power to see the future or have amazing peripheral vision. The giant vampire bats page says, Do not sleep with your windows open. Dismodus rotundus is small, short-haired, and even-tempered. Nothing like gravity falls. Mutated by waste dump. Next page, gnomes. I encountered my first gnome when I awoke one morning and I found it arguing politics with the stuffed bear head above my fireplace. Says their weakness is leaf blowers. 
pointy hats. I saw one taking a squirrel bath. I wish I could unsee this. Next page, case 28, Cursed Doors. Never would I have believed that a simple doorway could spell your doom, but I have seen several tourists go through ordinary-looking doors and simply disappear into thin air, never to be seen again. This phenomenon is unexplained. Myself. Who am I? To put it simply, I am strange. I was born strange. I am attracted to the strange. And the strange has always been attracted to me. My muse. One more thing about me. I have a secret. Note to self. Must keep this a complete secret. If anyone finds out about this, they will surely think I am insane. And my grant money may be revoked. It is best to leave this part of my research in the shadows. Now back to my investigations. Forest Oddities, Mothman. This urban legend of the Pacific Northwest is more than a myth. It has been drawn to the bug zapper in my backyard multiple times. Beard cubs and portal potty. A mysterious system of space warping outhouses seems to be strategically spreading throughout the town's forests. Scamp fire. Kill Billy. Suskitos. And Steve. Steve, never actually seen its face, covered in moss and mushrooms, hides in the forest big enough to pick up my car and eat it. Which it did, years ago. Stomach faced duck, question quail, cow, hoctopus, woodpecker pecker. Oh, wait a minute, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We definitely want to see this one. Leper corn. Their horns are musical and play a constant loop of Danny Boy. It is very irritating. The rainbow tail and mane. Gold coins fell out of his beard. I pocketed a few, but later discovered they were plastic. Everything about this creature is frustrating. The bottomless pit. I want to get to the bottom of this mystery, but it seems impossible. This Mobius pit seems to somehow impossibly loop back on itself. Many things that are tossed in are eventually tossed right back out, but some things never return. Do not throw something in if you ever want to see it again. A bit of history. Nathaniel Northwest. In my investigations, I recently made a discovery. Nathaniel Northwest may not be the founder of Gravity Falls. Imagine, his entire family legacy a fraud. I believe the proof of, his, of this secret is buried somewhere in the enclosed document. If only I could crack the code. The undead. Known for their pale skin and bad attitudes, these creatures are often mistaken for teenagers. Beware gravity falls. Nefarious zombies. Extremely dangerous. Truth-telling teeth. A weapon to use against deceivers. At least ones with no teeth. It would be quite interesting to see what my brother and mother would act like while wearing these. Ghosts. I know why Dan feared lending me this cabin. It is exceedingly haunted. But if there is one thing I know about hauntings, it is that they always have a reason of some kind. Haunted paintings and image-based specters. She was able to leap from image to image, even appeared in my $5 bill. The silver mirror proved to be her only weakness. Dream hipster. These guys are never satisfied with simply scaring you to death. They need to bring you to the brink of extinction and then pull you back from it so you can admire their handiwork. The muse has spoken. I awake after the longest slumber of my life with renewed energy and inspiration. My muse, that strange, whimsical creature who speaks to me in my dreams, has returned to me at last, this time with an insight so brilliant it can only be described as divine intervention. Codes. It occurs to me that if I must keep secrets from F, 
I might as well begin writing certain passages of this book in code. I aced cryptology in college, so this will be fun. Secret Tunnel As my assistant and I were arguing about what to do, we discovered that a strange living mineral was watching us with glowing eyes. Several more pairs of glowing eyes appeared in the dark. Cow Circles Is this a code, a language, or some intergalactic teenager's idea of a prank? Circles, spirals, and designs of otherworldly mathematical precision coat them from horns to hooves. Crash Site Omega We crashed through a barn roof and were fortunate enough to land in a soft, cushioning hayloft. Quills! Squash with human face and emotions. He's gorgeous! Cryogenic tube. We found our first specimen. During the dig, I discovered a large blue egg containing an utterly bizarre creature. This squishy, maggot-like hatchling has a unique ability. He can transform his body into anything he sees. Fuel gauge. Must recalibrate so that we don't short-circuit the entire town. Again. In order to see, I pray that I can prevent the darkness that F saw coming. If only I had listened to him when I had the chance. Triple-digit truck stop. Staying awake confounds me. To calm myself, I retreat to the only sanctuary I have known over the past couple weeks. The triple digits truck stop out on Route 14. The blind eye. What does it mean? Can't be unseen. There it is again. Trust no one. Unfortunately, my suspicions have been confirmed. I'm being watched. I must hide this book before he finds it. Wow, look at this. June 1st. Hey there. My name is Dipper Pines, and from now on, I'll be the one writing in this book. You're probably wondering how a normal kid like me wound up with one of the most amazing books of all time. All right, so Dipper's got the book now. Old Man Gucket. The cast on his arm has a strange hum coming from inside. He's a genius when it comes to robotics. Could he have a robot forearm? Is he slowly turning himself into a robot? June 3rd. If you go on enough road trips, chances are you've seen a certain bumper sticker. What is the mystery shack? It refers to my great uncle Stan's cabin in the woods. This creep, the hair, why is it so high? Why is it so white? This kid is like 10 years old. Does he dye it that color? Wendy Corduroy. Here's a name I won't forget anytime soon. Mabel and I both agree she's the coolest person in town. June 18th. Okay, so remember that uncrackable historical document that the author puzzled over? Well, Mabel's silliness accidentally solved it, and it led us to discover that the town was actually founded by Quentin Tremblay, the eight-and-a-half president of the United States. We're back from perhaps the craziest, scariest adventure yet. A trip inside Grunkle Stan's mind. We finally encountered Bill Cipher, the strange triangular brain demon mentioned in the journal. July 23rd. Ugh, it's 3 a.m. and I've barely slept. Seuss was right. Every time I fall asleep, I start having nightmares about the shapeshifter. July 29, a break in the case. I've been looking for a hint about the author's whereabouts this entire summer, but sometimes the answers are staring you right in the face. Category 11, Demonic Vengeance Specter. So you remember how the author thought there were only 10 categories of ghosts? Turns out he was way wrong. You think you've seen True Terror? Check out this flannel phantom. Seuss, upon first seeing this specimen, I believed him to be one of the hairless gopher people of the dimension Rodentus 7. I was shocked to discover that he's actually a human adult man. 
Wendy Corduroy. I recognize the name instantly. Stanley's other hired helper is the teenage daughter of boyish Dan Corduroy, the local lumberjack who helped construct my lab back in the 1980s. Infinite sided die. Infinite sides mean infinite outcomes, but you'd be surprised how often you roll a four. The refugees. Apparently they were asteroid miners whose ship was sucked into a dimensional wormhole and they found themselves lost here, like me. The M dimension. No, my niece Mabel did not draw this. This is what it really looks like. My guest to defeat Bill led me to a strange world that I mistakenly believed to be his birthplace. The two-dimensional dimension. My return to the nightmare realm was something that I had planned in my head for so long that it was difficult to believe it was actually happening. Plus, there are dimensions where everything happens in your head, so it can get confusing. Nightmares and daymares. Last night I woke covered in sweat, and not just because I slept in my clothes. Bill Cipher has decided to pay my mind a visit once more. The rift containment unit is cracking. I suggest it would be a good time for Stan to take the kids on that road trip he's been talking about while I puzzle over this problem. If the unit breaks, all the madness of Bill's nightmare dimension will come spilling into ours. The worst has happened. Bill has been let loose in our world. August 25th. Dipper here. I can't believe I'm holding this book in my hands. I saw Bill burn all three journals right in front of me. But this morning, Seuss found the journals lying in the woods, unharmed. Trust no one. What an absurd and paranoid idea. Trust shouldn't be given unconditionally, but it should be given a chance to be earned. There is strength in having the humility to work with and sacrifice for others. A strength. I now realize was in my brother all along. I don't want this to be a spoiler for you guys, so I'm going to stop right there. I'll let you read the rest on your own. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, and maybe even subscribe. Take care, and see you at the next video. Bye-bye for now.